Welcome, welcome, welcome to getting to know Google Classroom. I know Google Classroom is the hot topic right now, so I want to make sure to show you step by step how to use Google Classroom. This session is sponsored by LeQ, the Louisiana Association of Computer Using Educators. Today's webinar is sponsored by LeQ and also sponsored by Educator Alexander. We have a conference that's coming up in just a couple of days, guys, on December 7th through the 9th at the Hyatt Regency in New Orleans. Hopefully you can join us. I will tell you that membership into LeQ is completely free. So all you do is go to the brand LeQ.org. So if you've been to the LeQ website before and you haven't been there in the last couple of months, you must go to the new website. It's amazing. So you can go to LeQ.org and sign up to be a LeQ member. And hopefully I will be seeing you guys next week at our annual conference starting on my birthday, December 7th and ending on, sadly, ending on December 9th. So today we are going to learn how to use Google Classroom. We did have a different presenter, but unfortunately she had to back out. So I went ahead and picked it on up. So your presenter and host today is me, Desiree Alexander, AKA Educator Alexander. And I am the Instructional Technology Supervisor for Cattle Parish Public Schools in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I am the founder and consultant for Educator Alexander Consulting, LLC. Let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. So what's going to happen in a second is you should see my actual screen pop up so you should see my desktop right now and now you should see Google Classroom so if you do not see Google Classroom it may tell you that it's going to um, download an add-on if it says that that's completely fine let it download it's going to take about a minute or two and then you'll be right back with us all right let's continue this is Google Classroom. How do you get to Google Classroom? You simply go to classroom.google.com. Classroom.google.com. I will tell you it's a little bit of a bummer, but you cannot use Google Classroom with your personal Google account. You have to have a school domain. So as you can see up here, I'm signed in with my school domain. You have to have a school domain, which means your school district has to set up Google Classroom in order for you to use it. So if you just go and go to classroom.google.com and your district has not set it up, you will not be able to use it. So if you're, you're, you really want to use Google Classroom and you know your district has not set it up, then that's a conversation that you need to get started with your IT or your instructional technology at your um, at your district. Okay, so when you first, 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 first time ever log into Google Classroom, you're going to see a big screen that looks like a chalkboard. On that chalkboard is just going to say something like, welcome to Google Classroom. And then you're going to see a little plus sign up here in the corner. Click that plus sign and you have two options. Your students will only have one option, which is to join the class. You have two options, either join or create. So what you're going to do is click on create. When you click on create, you get this screen that says, okay, well, what class do you want to create? So you give the class a name, whatever you put in the first and second box uh, line, sorry, will show up on your Google Classroom. So I'm going to put my class name is LeQ Webinar, of course. The section is where you usually put your class period. So I'm going to put second period. Why? I don't know. And then the third line, you see it says subject. If you put anything here, it will not show up in your actual class. So I usually just leave that blank. Then I'm going to hit create. And I will tell you that all questions, if you have a question, I'll answer them at the end, mainly because uh, I don't see your, uh, your questions while I'm doing this. 
So I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you or anything like that. It's just that I'll, I only see my screen. Okay, so you see I have my, um, my classroom. It's done. I'm done creating it. Yay me. I'm awesome. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to want to do is make it pretty. Uh, this is something in this background dealing with music. I don't want that. So I'm going to come here. You have select theme and upload photo. So what I'm going to do is go to select theme. Anyone who has dealt with a Google form, this will look familiar to you. You have different themes that you can choose. You can also just choose different patterns. So I'm going to choose the jelly beans. People usually love the jelly beans. So if I double click on the jelly beans, now you see my picture has changed and my color. You can also upload a photo if you have a class photo or a school um, mascot or anything like that. You can actually upload your own photo to put here as well. You see that I have my LeQ webinar title, I have my period, I have my name, and I have my picture. My login will always be up here. You have three tabs in Google Classroom. Stream, which I compare to your Facebook page where everything that you post will be on your stream. You have a students tab where all of your students live, and you have an about tab. I always start with the about tab. The about tab is the place that you put content that your students will need year round. This is not where you put assignments. This is where you put things that your students will need year round. Anything that you put on this page, your students will see. And I'm actually going to show you a student screen later. Um, so anything that you put on this About tab, your students will see. So you see that I have the LeQ second period. I can change that if I wanted to. Where it says Class Description, you can either leave it blank or you can put a description of your class. The reason why I say it five times that whatever you put on this screen, your students will see, is because you don't want to put, you know, the slow class right here because they're going to see that. So put, you know, keep it professional and put something professional or just leave it blank. You can put a room number right here. Anytime you begin a Google Classroom, it creates a Google Drive folder. So you'll have this folder and your students will have this Google Drive folder. So if I click there, it's going to bring me to Google Drive. Oh, why not do it? See, now it brought me to my Google Drive. I have a classroom folder. And then I have all the Google Classrooms, because I do training all over, all the Google Classrooms that I've created. All those folders are in here, including my LeQ webinar folder back to classroom you have your calendars you can view your calendar in classroom and it looks like this this is what your students will see with their assignments on it and then you can actually open the calendar in the traditional google calendar whatever you do right here you want to click save and you're done your students will see this your students will also see everything that's over here they will see your picture so please be careful and make sure that your picture is appropriate. If you go to your Gmail and think, oh, I can change my picture because my Gmail is something different, whatever you change your picture to will be the picture across the whole platform of Google. So please make sure that you keep your picture professional. They'll see your name and they will see your email address. Now we have Add Class Materials. I'm going to click there. Again, this is not the place to put assignments. This is the place to put class materials that your students will need year round. That will be your syllabus. That will be maybe some math tables. That will be a grade sheet that they, um, that they write their grades on. That will be any information that they will use year round. So all you do is give it a title. I'm going to call this one syllabus. And then you have four options to upload. First option, you click it, is to upload from your computer. You can see here at the top, you can also upload from your My Drive. This is your recent folder in your drive. Let's see where we're doing stuff with <laughs> Elf on the Shelf. This is your 
entire my drive and then these are your favorites the stars in your my drive the next one goes to the exact same box except it starts with recent the next one is to upload a YouTube video you just simply type in the video that you're looking for like I'm looking for something dealing with cats double click it now it's here you can also if you have the URL you can copy and paste it here last but not least you can add a link so I always have people when I show them the YouTube video they go well what if I want a video from Khan Academy or what what if I want a video from somewhere else well that's where you can just use the link to the video or the link to the website you're going to be using a bunch the link to whatever you want to use so I'm going to put Yahoo there you go so I have a link and let me go ahead and upload something too oh I could have used the same the same box I'll upload uh, the elf on the shelf eating candy okay so when I'm done I will go ahead and click post once I have that you can see you can add multiple things now I can go and add other class material so now I may want to add forms and add a whole bunch of forms here just kind of whatever you want to add if you come here you can edit it or you can de can delete it that's pretty much it for the about tab the only thing that your students will not see is invite teacher this is where you will go if you want to invite a co-teacher to help you teach this class I would click invite teacher and I would either find the teacher in my contacts in my groups or from my district it is actually under directory so in the directory and I'm gonna close that so you don't see any of our students email addresses but in the directory we have every student and every teacher in our entire district so you can actually click that and then find a teacher that you want you can use the search box and then invite them to be an actual co-teacher they can do everything that you can do with that Google, with that Google Classroom. Moving on to the student tab. I'm actually going to go into a different classroom where I actually have a student. So I can show you the student tab with a student. This is the practice student. So all your students that you have invited to your class live here. Well, Desiree, how do I get students in here? The easiest way, in my opinion, some people like the other way that I'm going to show you better. The easiest way, in my opinion, is the class code. You simply write this on the board and tell your students to join the class. How do they join? They'll go to classroom.google.com and click join. Once they click join, it'll ask them for the class code. They put the class code in and they'll magically appear on your list. It's that easy. If for some reason your class code gets, I'm not going to say stolen, but you start seeing random students hopping into your class and you're like, well, those aren't even my students. What you can do is reset your class code. That gives you a brand new, fresh class code. If you know that all your students are already in your classroom, you can actually disable your class code. And that way, no one can use it, especially if you're, you're, you already have all your students in there. There's no reason to have an active class code. And then if I need to enable it again, it's that easy. Done. I have a new class code. Second way that you can do it is to invite your students. When you invite your students, when your students go to there, this is actually a student page right here. When your students go to theirs, they'll have a box sitting there with your class and it'll say join class and all they have to do is simply click join class to invite your students it looks exactly like the same thing where you're inviting the co-teacher again ours is under directory all of our students will pop up we can click check marks or I can search for each student completely up to you which one you want to do this is majorly important once you create a Google Classroom, the setting that it's going to be on, the, your default setting, is students can post and comment. That means everything that you can do, your students can do too. 
if you can post a video, they can post a video. If you can post comments, they can post comments. If you can post a PDF document, they can post a PDF document. You know where your students are. You know what your students can handle. So it's really up to you if you want to give them this much power, I'll say. Um, so just, you know, it's really up to you. But what you need to know is as soon as you do a classroom, this is the default. So if you never look at this page or never change this, they will have access to post and comment. The second one is students can only comment. So they cannot post things, but they can comment on assignments. They can comment to each other. And then the last setting is only the teacher can post and comment. You can change these at any time. So whatever you start with doesn't have to be with you in with. And of course, me being a former teacher and being a former librarian, we can we really can't keep shielding students from um, learning digital citizenship. We want them to learn what's good and what's bad, you know, what you can post and what you can't post, what's professional. So I know some of us will just quickly want to go here, and it may be really good to go there in the beginning, but of course we want to teach them that digital citizenship. When you click on a student, once you have a student, the Actions button will show up. Under the Actions button, you can remove a student. Maybe they switched classes. You can email a student if email is on. You do not, your students do not have to have an active email address in order to use Google Drive and Google Classroom. A lot of people think that. You can actually turn off the email feature if you don't want them to have an email address and they will still be able to have a Google Drive and a Google and be in Google Classroom. And then you can mute a student, which I really, really like. So if I do have this on um, students can post and comment, and then one student makes, I'm going to say, a mistake and post something inappropriate, I can come and check on that student and mute them. That means you can see that they can still submit work. Other students won't see it. They cannot reply and they cannot comment and post. So if one student makes a mistake or a couple of them, I can just come check a couple of them and mute them. Right here is another email student button if your email is active. And last but not least, this is new to Google Classroom or new as of this summer. You have Guardian email summaries. What that means is that the, uh, the parent or guardian of your students can get email summaries about what they're doing in Google Classroom. You can simply turn this on, and when you click there, it's going to say, do you want to turn it on for all your classes or just this class? I'm going to say just this class. And what the parents are going to get is an email that looks like this. It's a weekly summary that shows them the student work that they're missing, what they have uh, coming up that's due, and then a little snapshot of activity from each of their classes. How do you get the parent or guardian in here? You actually have to go to each student, click Invite Guardians, and you type in the guardian's email address. If they have more than one guardian, email address, invite, email address, invite. That's how you get them in. Once you have guardians in here, you can use this middle button that says email all guardians. You can actually email your guardians different things as well. That's it for the student tab. Moving on to your stream. You can see your stream has what work is due right here. And your students have the exact same thing. This is the only tab that's different for your students. And I'll show you that. So you have your, your work due tab. You have your topics, which I'll explain in a second. And then you have the option to, sh to show deleted items in your stream. I'm actually going to go back to our LeQ webinar because this is how your stream will look when nothing's there. The big green button, well, whatever color yours is, but mine is green, uh, you don't even have to click it. You just hover over it and you get four options. When you hover over it, the first option is to create an announcement. If you click that, first thing you can do is say, well, I don't want this announcement to just be for LeQ. I want this announcement to be for my first five classes. 
Okay, then choose whatever classes you want to go to. And you see now it says five classes. I'm going to tell them field trip today. If you want, this is new to Google, um, Google Classroom as well. If you want to put your post by topics, it's just a really neat way to organize your post. So instead of when your baby comes and says, well, I put a, a comment and you never comment it back, you don't have to search through your entire stream to find it. You can come here to topics and go, what, what, what did you post about? Oh, I'll post about field trips. So you can actually click on field trips and see all of your announcements and all of your assignments about that one topic. So I can come here and say, create topic. It's just, okay, what do you want this topic to be called? I'll just call it field trip one since I already have a field trip one. There I go. You can see right here that you can also upload any of the same items that I already showed you in the last one. It automatically saves. You can delete it at any time with the trash can. I can either post it now or I have three options. Anytime you do your very first announcement, it will not allow you to schedule. So I can post now or I can save my draft. I was typing this and the last bell run. Dang it, I have bus duty. I'm going to go ahead and save this draft and run out. When I come back, all of my saved drafts are always up right here at the top. If I click it, oh, this is the one I'm looking for. Field trip today. Bring your money. Now I'm going to go ahead and post it. So here's my announcement. You see that the class can comment on it. I left that open. It tells me what time and it has. Now I have a topic over here. You can edit it, delete it, or copy a link for it. Next one is creating assignment. Exact same thing, guys. That's what I love about Google Classroom. Once you learn it, it's easy to use. I can put that my assignment is a worksheet, which hopefully will be a little bit more than that. I can put my instructions right here. Do it. I can put a due date. I'm going to put it due on the 8th. I can put a time. As soon as you click time, it's automatically going to go to midnight. But you can always change that to whatever you want to change it to. I can put a topic. Or I'm going to leave this as no topic. I can add the assignment. Now, when you add the assignment, it's going to ask you where you want to add the assignment from. I'm going to go ahead and add a Google document. Now, if you want your students to be able to, I'm going to say use Google Classroom the way it was meant to use. If you want them to be able to turn in the assignment, you can comment on it, you can send it back, all that kind of stuff. You have to use a Google product. You have to use a Google Doc, a Google Sheet, Google Slide. Um, if you use a PDF or a Word document or anything like that, your students will only be able to view it. So you see I used a Google Doc. So I have some options right here. Students can just view the file, which means they can only look at it, which you're going to have some angry students if you tell them to do something on it and you leave this here. They can edit the file, which means all of your students are editing the same file, which is your collaboration mode. Or you can make a copy for each student. That means Johnny's going to get his copy, Sarah's going to get her copy. They're going to fill it out and have their own copies in their Google Drives. This is the one you're probably going to use the most. Then you can assign it, you can schedule it, or you can save it as a draft. If I schedule it, it's going to say, well, when do you want it to be scheduled? Well, I want it to go out tomorrow at 8 a.m. I want as soon as we walk into class, even though I know most of us walk into class before 8 a.m., but if you want as soon as we walk into class, I want that to be scheduled. So now it's telling me I have a scheduled one. Now I'm going to go create another assignment and use a PowerPoint or a PDF. So you see when I use a PDF, we have the same options, but again, you may want to look at testing it and making sure that they can actually edit it if you're not using a Google product. So I'm going to assign this one so you can see how it looks right here. 
So if I had students in this class, it would tell me 24 not done. And as soon as they turn it in, it'll come to this column. One done, two done, three done. It does that all by itself. The next one is to create a question. And I hope if you have some questions, I will get to answer them at the end. So definitely keep up with them. Uh, this is how you add a question. Again, you can choose what class to send it to. What is your question? How are you today? You can put instructions. You can put a due date or leave it blank. You have the option for short answer or multiple choice. If it's a short answer question, you can allow your students to reply to each other if you have already turned off that, um, that setting. And you can allow students to edit their own answer. And you may ask, well, why wouldn't you let them edit their answer? Well, if you're concerned about things like cyberbullying, where somebody may put something really nasty on there and then go delete it later or something like that, you may want to turn this off. Um, so this is up to you. You know your students. Right here, of course, you can add anything you want to add to it, any kind of file. And then, oh, I'm sorry, I was about to, I'm going too fast. After short answer, if you choose to have it as a multiple choice, again, if you're used to Google Forms, this looks familiar. You put your uh, answer choices right here. And you can just keep adding them. You can allow them to see a class summary or not. That means they will see how many people said yes and how many people said no. So it's up to you. You can turn that on and off by just clicking it. You can do the exact same things. But I'm going to say go ahead and ask it. So here's my question. Not done or done. It will tell me how many people did it and how many people didn't. And I can always come here, edit it, delete it, or copy a link for it. Last but not least, you can reuse a post. What does that mean? That means any time that you do a post, like all of these are posts, any time that you do a post, you can actually come here and say, you know what, I really like that assignment that I gave to my science class last year. I want to reuse that post. So you come here and click reuse post. The first thing it's going to ask you is, well, what class do you have that post in that you want to reuse it? Well, it was in my English class. Select. Okay, well, these are all your posts from that English class. Which one do you want to reuse? Okay, well, I'll reuse this one. And you see that you have a box right here you can check to create new copies of all the attachments. I'm going to say yes. I don't even think I have attachments on here. So, okay, is this the one you want? Yeah. Do you want to put it to different classes? No. Do you want to edit it? No. I'm going to go ahead and post it. So you can actually reuse posts from other classes and you don't have to redo them all by yourself. All right, that is Google Classroom. If you come up here to the hamburger, this is where all of your, I call it, background information lives. You have a link a link to all of your classes. If you click that, you see them like this. And then you can always go to any one of them that you want to. You have a link to your calendar. You have all the classes that you are involved in. I really like that it, it um, puts them in categories of which ones you're teaching and which ones you're enrolled in. And you may ask, well, why would I be enrolled in a classroom? Well, if you want to see another teacher's class, maybe you have students and you ask the parent to enroll you in it. Um, or the Google Classroom is also used a lot for professional development. So we'll have someone that does a class for professional development and they'll enroll you in it. Then you have your settings down here. If you go to your settings, this is a very important setting. The send email notifications. Do you want to receive an email every time someone does anything on your Google Drive? If they submit something, if they say a comment, so you decide, do you want to get the 50,000 emails or not? And then you know you can come and change this at any time. I had one um, teacher in a class say, well, you know what, I think I would like to turn it on if we're doing a discussion. 
and turn it off if we're not or you know however so just know that this is here to change your profile picture picture or go to your other Google account settings you can click right here when you're under your classes I'm seeing some comments I'm trying to read them uh, when you're doing your classes you have your three uh, these are this is a hamburger these are hot dogs you have your hot dog you can click on it you can edit it or you can archive there is no delete so you wouldn't delete a class but you can archive a class so if you're not using it anymore um, the new year is starting things like that you can go ahead and archive your class or you can edit it and make it fresh for your your new class like all of these I'm going to have to archive because they're all most of them are just um, training classes also when you're in a class and you're like you know what this is awesome but I want to create a brand new class for my third period you would go to the hamburger and that's where you get your plus sign again looking at it from the student perspective this is the student side you notice that they don't even give me an option all I can do is join so as soon as I click plus sign that's all what's the class code when you go in a classroom this is this is a, a student account right here so if I go in the classroom you see that the students have a stream they have classmates instead of students and an about tab the about tab shows them everything just like I told you except for the invite teachers classmates shows them all of their classmates who are in this class and stream shows them everything that you have put on there this student has a plus sign because I gave them an option to create a post you notice they don't have assignments and all that but I told them that they can do post so this student can upload whatever they want to upload Oh no, look at all the late assignments I have. I'm not that very I'm not very good of a student. Um, no work due, but I have everything late. Um, the students also have the topics where they can go through and see um you know what you did in that one topic. When a student has an assignment, they can open the assignment. So there's really nothing here because I didn't put anything um, but they can add a private comment which will only go to you they can mark it as done okay I've done that and then when I go back to the teacher side it will show that the student has done it it'll have that number one and then they can unsubmit it They're like oh no I forgot to do something they can unsubmit it so this is just a little glimpse into the student side let me see if I have okay so for example I have a student here and it's not done I want to see if I had one that the student actually turned in the work so let me see sample second period let's go back to the student side do, 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 do. all right so I'm going to open this assignment. I'm going to mark it as done. And then if we go back to the teacher side, I think this was the same. Oh, there it went. It took a second, but now it says that the student did it. Yay! So if I click on that, now I have options for my students. This is kind of your grade book, if you would. So you see that I, I can say how many points, or I can say it's just ungraded. I just wanted to see them turn it in. I can go to the individual student and see what they've done, see all of their history. I can click on, oh, look, they did it late. Tisk, tisk. Um, there is no actual assignment here, but if there was, I can click on it and actually see the assignment. I can return the assignment back to the student. When I click on it, especially if it's in Google Drive, it will direct you back to your Google Drive, and then you can comment on it and do all that kind of stuff. I like to tell people that you really shouldn't be using Google Classroom unless you already know Google Drive. 
because you need to know how to comment in docs. You need to know how to do all that kind of stuff in Google Drive before you um, kind of start using Google Classroom. Um, so this is that area in the instructions that you gave. There you go. So I want to show you one that kind of had a student that did the assignment. And that is Google Classroom in a nutshell. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward. There's not a whole bunch of bunch to do besides just doing your work and um, putting assignments out there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, I think we have a question about creating assignments. So let me stop sharing my screen and I'm going to get to any questions and when I see what the questions are, then I can go back and show you. So what are some questions? I see one, I'm a little confused about creating assignments. I use Google Classroom regularly. What is the difference between the three options that you are giving? If I select the first option, are students able to alter my original assignment? Okay, I'll go back through those, no problem at all. I'll go back through the different options. I also see we have some extra people that came in while I was presenting, which is awesome. Make sure that you sign in. I will um, explain how to do that in a second. Any tips on using PDF documents for allowing students to answer on the PDF? Honestly, if you do not, what I would do is create a Google, um, a Google Doc from the PDF. And you can do that with certain PDFs, certain ones you can't. So it really is just um, up in the air. You'll have to try your PDF and see if it, if it allows it to, um, to work. If your students are using Google Classroom on the app, they are allowed to annotate now. So if they are using Google Classroom on the app, like on a, an iPhone or um, Android, they can actually annotate. So they can pull up your PDF if you assign it per student. They can pull up your PDF and actually write on it or draw on it to answer it. So that's a really good thing, Jason. But they have to be using a um, the app. Okay, let me... Excuse me, let me answer Christina's question. Do we have any other questions? Can a single teacher get a domain? Um, yes, Paula. A single teacher can get a domain. A single school can get a domain. Um, you can actually buy a domain yourself. It's really not that expensive. Um, the only problem is it needs to be an educational domain. But I've known people who have... Uh, I definitely know schools in my district actually bought their own domain and started using Google Classroom before the district um, started using it. So yes, you absolutely can. All right, so let me share my screen again and go through the different options when you are creating an assignment. Do, 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 do. All right, so when you're creating, I'm going to go ahead and add a document here because you don't get those options unless you uh, add a document. Okay. So you have students can view file, students can edit file, and make a copy for each student. Students can view file means exactly what it says. I will just be able to put my eyes on it and view it. I will not be able to edit it. I will not be able to do anything to it. I can only look at it. So let's say you put a paper copy of a test on there. You may want to put that they can only view it. Maybe you put a reading passage on there. You don't want them to do anything with the actual reading passage. You just want them to look at it. So that would be students can view file. I hope I'm answering the question that you asked. If not, I'm going to go back. Um, students can edit file means all of your students can edit the same file. So that would be a collaboration. So if I say, hey, guys, I want you to go home. I want you to work on... Um, each person put their own sentence to the paragraph and then we'll see what we created. So students can edit file means all of your students, that's your collaboration one, that your students can edit the same file. Make a copy for each student means you're actually making a quote-unquote handout for each and every student. It's going to go just to their drive. And what it's going to do is when it says whatever the title is, like mine is DRC app status, then it's going to say DRC app status dash Desiree Alexander, DRC app status dash John Smith. 
and it goes into just their um just their Google Drive and it becomes their document that they can edit and then turn back into you. So this is the one that people usually use the most, but those are the, the difference between the three options. So I'm going to oh I keep doing the wrong one, sorry. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and see what other questions we have. Uh, Christina, did I answer your question? Please make sure I did. <laughs> I don't. I hope I didn't just go off on a tangent. And that's not what you were asking. Um, oh, I see y'all are having a really good discussion. I can't wait to read it. Um, Paula, it is a great way to celebrate my birthday. I love it. Uh, Christine, okay. So I think I've answered everything. Do we have any other questions? You're welcome. Uh, the Cloud Converter app on Google changes form to doc and any form of doc. Awesome. All right. So if we don't have any other questions, while I'm getting this together. Okay. So what I want to make sure that you do is if you did not sign in, please make sure to sign in. That is the only way you receive your certificate. I'm going to say that one more time. Please make sure you sign in. That is the only way you will receive your certificate. How do you sign in? You go to the link that's on your screen right now. Or you can go to the web links to box, which is in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Click sign in here and click browse to. Or I will type it in the chat box. Everyone who's already signed in, please make sure to do the evaluation dot com slash sign dash in okay and then please make sure to do the evaluation it lets us know if you want to have more of these and things like that so and that's the evaluation okay so please make sure to do the evaluation we do have um the next the Q sponsored webinar which will be on digital media on wednesday january 18th I will only be hosting and the presenter will be Morgan. Uh, so please make sure to join us for this. It should be really, really interesting about digital media and tools for filmmaking in the classroom. She's going to be concentrating on iMovie and some other uh, software that you can use with your students, parents, and educators around the world. So this will be our new, uh, our new, not new, sorry, our upcoming webinar on January 18th. So if you do not have any other questions, that is it for our webinar. Um, if you have any questions, anything that comes to your mind, please go ahead and let me know. January 18th will be our next webinar. And please make sure to do the evaluation. And thank you so much. I appreciate it. You can contact me at educatoralexander at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it.